this is the uh, very impressive engine bay of a 1963 Plymouth Sport Fury convertible. Um, this car is not as it left the factory in 1963. However, at this point, it presents itself as a 426 Max Wedge car, just like the real one was. Um, this thing has the correct aluminum intake manifold, cross ram with a set of uh, nicely matched Carter AFB carburetors that work simultaneously with the uh, uh, linkage setup that's on it. The coil is in the correct spot for it, the way it was in 1963. Presto light distributor, uh, full vacuum advance, there's no, uh, or full vacuum, full centrifugal advance, there is no vacuum advance working on this uh, distributor. It's all full uh, centrifugal. Correct cast iron exhaust manifolds, a huge set of individual tube cast iron exhaust manifolds on this car, just the way they were in 1963 for the Max Wedge car. The car is very well set up. It has power steering. It has a dual stage master cylinder instead of the single stage. It gives you a lot of uh, safety margin there. Uh, it has a new alternator on it. Someone has uh, upgraded it to a um, transistorized ignition system uh, as opposed to the standard uh, point system on the vehicle. It has the correct style Mopar radiator for 1963, also the correct style fan. Battery is in the front, not placed in the back like most of the uh, uh, race cars were, but this one is in the front the way it would have been on a street car had you ordered a Max Wedge uh, from the factory in 1963 in a convertible, which you could have done. Um, does have a set of uh, horns on it yet, the original equipment style from the factory. Uh, the radiator core support seems to be undisrupted. The number, I believe, is still here. I can't really quite read it, but it appears to be there. There is no fender tag on the vehicle. Uh, it is not a as it came from the factory per se car, but at this point it presents itself to you as a Max Wedge 426 dual quad cross ram with the correct exhaust manifolds on it, a fantastic, fantastic piece of uh, Chrysler engineering. And in the 60s, the early 60s, when they came out with these Max Wedge motors, nothing went by them. Not 409 Chevys, not 406 or 427 Fords. These were king of the hill for quite a few years until the Hemi came along. <clears throat> we're going to go around the rest of it and show you what we can on it. Hi, right, today we're going to show you a really neat vehicle. Usually we do it with the top up, but this is uh, so impressive with the top down, uh, Devin just took a bunch of uh, still photos for you on it, so uh, we're kind of hurriedly going to go through this and show you what we can on the exterior of the car, and the interior actually. Uh, the fitment of the hood is spot on. You cannot make a hood fit any better than this car does. From the fender to the hood to the cowl area is just absolutely spot on. The chrome down the center, which is normally pitted, and your, of course your Mopar emblem, Plymouth emblem in the front, and your lettering, absolutely no patina, no deterioration whatsoever. The paint on this car is not driver quality. It approaches a show quality paint job, uh, very, very nicely, nicely laid on, uh, real nice depth to it, and it's a black car, and I can't see a single imperfection in it. No chips, no marks, no indentures, absolutely nothing. Again, Plymouth across the nose here, anodized aluminum grill, just as fresh and clean as it was in 1963 when the car was released. The um, basils around your uh, uh, <laughs> turn signals, parking lights, just as fresh and clean as can be. Also, the lens is the same way. The bumper has absolutely no marks whatsoever on it, no scuffs or uh, imperfections at all on the front bumper. The chrome is as it was when it was new. The anodized aluminum piece in front of the grill here, the same way. No deterioration, absolutely none. Going down the side of the car, uh, you can see the uh, engine turning in the uh, inset in the uh, trim down the side of this vehicle. That's the way the Sport Furies were. Fantastic set of wheels. I got to point those out before we go any further. A Magnum 500s on this, which would not have been original equipment on a car, but the most desirable Mopar wheel ever. Sport Fury designation because that's what it is. And look at this fitment. Look at this. This is totally amazing. Just totally amazing. Correct wiper arms and blades. Highly polished uh, stainless around your windshield uh, surround. 
padded dash, just as clean and fresh as can be. The uh, steel part that goes up to the base of the windshield, absolutely flawless. Tinted window in the front. Uh, I don't know if they are on the sides or not. This is usually deteriorated somewhat too. Absolutely none on this car. Just as fresh and clean a uh, chrome as you could ever hope to find. New wipes whiskers in it. Uh, Devin will show you the windows being up and uh, they're, uh, they're absolutely positive fitment on them. Again, look at this fitment of the door. There's no, absolutely no way you can make that door fit any better than it does. Looking inside the car, original interior in this car. Uh, actually, the original molded armrest too. They're not replaced, they are the original ones. And I don't believe the interior has been replaced. I think it is the original interior in the car. Dashboard, your typical Mopar dash for it. No cracks that I can see on the steering wheel. These are usually deteriorated and cracked, shrinkage through the years. This one is not. Bucket seats, front end, well, buckets in the front, obviously, bench in the back, but uh, they appear to be buckets in the back just the way they're molded. Center console, there's no deterioration on it. Carpeting, nice and fresh and clean, just the way you'd hope to find it. Your gauge enclosure is just as fresh and clean the same way. The silver um, paint on it is nice and uh, fresh and clean. Vintag, which Devin's going to give you a nice picture of, is just as nice as uh, it was in 63 when this car was released. There's no deterioration inside the doors. Your sills are just as nice as you could ever hope to find. There's no deterioration on them also. Door is absolutely as fresh as you could ever hope to find. All your seams are right, right just the way they were from the factory. Going down the side of it, obviously we can't show you the top. It is white. You'll see it in Devin's pictures. But uh, it has a boot on it now, and the top is absolutely as it was when it was new. Again, our engine turning down the sides here, machine turning, whatever you want to call it, it's just really nice and dramatic for this car. No denser marks. Linearity down the side of this car is a very impressive. It looks like it has no doors standing off from the side of it here. The paint, the fit, the finish, everything so far in this car is spot on. Deck lid the same way the uh, hood was. Um, Fitment on the uh, driver's side and the passenger side. The gap is absolutely flawless. Sport Fury designation, and Sport Fury's always had the tri colors on red, white, and blue. Fantastic looking car. Your anodized aluminum handle in the back, there's no deterioration on it. Back bumper, the same way as it was on the front. Absolutely as new. Turned down exhaust the way they would have been. They didn't have chrome tips back in that era. The uh, basils around the tail lights, the same as they were in the front. These are chrome and they're absolutely flawless. There is no deterioration at all. This car is as nice a vehicle as you could ever, ever hope to find. You can see the trunk area appears to be the original quarter panels on the car yet also. But the, uh, the trunk area is as it was in 63. There's no deterioration at all, no, no rust, uh, no indications of any rust. This is the, uh, we try to keep these from uh, being laid down and, and have these sweat and uh, produce some kind of moisture that you would have a problem with. Jack designation in the front or underneath the uh, deck lid. There's no, every seam on this car is just as fresh and clean as you could ever hope to find one. This car is an absolute, absolute find. I don't know where Kevin got this thing, but wherever it was, you know, it's just totally impressive the way this car's been done. And it's originality too. The quarter panels, again, appear to be original to me. And everything on this car is just spot on. Passenger side. Again, there's still no imperfections. We still haven't found anything whatsoever uh, to comment on this car. Uh, no dense marks whatsoever. Usually you'd expect to find a door dent in this uh, trim down the sides, a stainless trim. There is absolutely none. The stainless is all finely polished on this vehicle. Again, Devin's going to give you a uh, whole slew of photos on this car. You're going to have 100 photographs on this car, high resolution, so that you can see absolutely every aspect of it. The car presents itself as an original interior car. I can't really say for sure, but to me it looks like the original interior that this car was born with. Phenomenal car, and the door panels also. Look at the way this thing closes, and look, look at the gap. Look at this. Totally amazing. Totally. 
Again, no deterioration on the chrome. Look, there is no way that you could possibly get any car, whether it's this one or a Camaro or a Chevelle or anything, to fit any better, any more precise than this car does for Fury designation. And we're back where we started again. A phenomenal car. This thing is like, at this point in time, this is my favorite car in the building, even over the Hemi uh, uh, Challenger. It's a 426 Max Wedge Sport Fury Convertible, 1963. Very popular year. 63 and 64 were really popular years in Mopar uh, land. Uh, everyone wanted one of these. They're uh, not that large a car. They're about the size of a GTO, not much bigger. Uh, they were a little on the smaller side, and that's why they performed the way they did. So even though Pontiac claims to have the first car in 64 as a uh, uh, supercar, muscle car, these guys preceded that somewhat. In 62, they were actually smaller than this, and you could get it with a max wedge in it. So guess what? These were the first muscle cars, and they're still muscle cars today. Uh, this car is a very very high-end car. We didn't find a simple imperfection in the paint, in the fitment, in any of the appointments on the car. One of the best color combinations you could ever hope to find, that copper and black interior, a black car, Kelsey Hayes wheels on it, Magnums, road wheels, whatever you want to call them, <clears throat> white convertible top, which is power too, by the way, um, with the correct boot that goes along with it. A phenomenal car. I can't wait to get underneath this thing and uh, see what it looks like underneath. But this car is available at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. And I'll bet there's not another one on the site anywhere that you can find, uh, whether it's eBay or anywhere that uh, duplicates this one. Um, we encourage everybody to come down and look at it. But if you can't, that's why Devin's going to give you a complete, complete show of this vehicle in 100 photos, still high resolution. And we're trying to do this video to point out everything that we possibly can on the car. Which, by the way, we went around this car and found nothing. I couldn't find a single panel that was not fit correctly, a mark, a chip, a scuff, nothing. This car is one of the nicest vehicles that we have in the building, and it definitely deserves your attention. Take a look at it, Hangsters Daytona Beach. Okay, this is the uh, underside of our uh, 63 Max Wedge style Plymouth. Uh, Fury convertible and it's not just a style car because we just checked the uh, block number on here Of course there are no numbers on the side back in that era. They didn't start that until 68, but it is a 426 block This is a 426 engine. That's what it started life as anyway um, Also no leaks on the engine. You can see it's been out and completely freshened up or the bell housing or the punch button uh, Chrysler transmission that's in it um, Does have power steering Everything on the brake system, shocks are new in the front, uh, all your lines are new, uh, ball joints, tie rod ends, everything on the vehicle appears to be absolutely as new. Uh, cooling lines going to the uh, radiator are the uh, original style cooling lines. There's no marks or indentures that I can really see. One little tiny pull here from someone tying it down in shipment. Same thing on this side, that's where it's from. It's from shipment. Nice solid frame, torque boxes in the front. Uh, are nice. There's no uh, dentures in them whatsoever. Uh, no leaks on the uh, speedometer gear coming out of the uh, transmission. Uh, this car is very, very nice. The, the uh, floor pans again are just as they appear to be original, just like the borders and everything else on this car. I don't see anything on the vehicle that doesn't show its uh, originality so far, including the cast iron exhaust manifolds that go into three inch primary pipes that have a crossover pipe on them, and as they came from the factory, there were dumps that you could open up and have this thing run straight off the uh, uh, tuned cast iron exhaust manifolds. That's the way Chrysler engineered this vehicle. Uh, new U-joint uh, in the front. Um, parking brake still hooked up and functional. And again, you can see our crossover tube here, which would have been correct for this uh, uh, vehicle. Three-inch pipe coming back to uh, a set of Dyno, Dynamax uh, under chassis mufflers. A uh, real good high flow muffler. You know, the uh, floors where they go on to the rocker panels still have their original pinch marks. Uh, the original pinch wells are still intact on this vehicle. I don't see any indication that anything has been replaced underneath this car. Everything appears to be original and um, uh, just the way it was in 1963. Full torque boxes in the front for your springs. 
Uh, it has a, a, a set of springs that have a nice curvature to them yet. Drum brakes in the front, drum brakes in the rear. Also a 70, 741 casting for the 8 and 3 quarter inch ring gear that would be standard equipment in this car. 741 would have been the correct gear uh, casting uh, housing for this car in 1963. Uh, the pipes going into the mufflers are 3 inch pipes. Uh, there are also 3 inch pipes coming out. That's really a nice setup. Someone's really spent some time uh, engineering a great exhaust system for this new shocks in the back. Uh, brand new round of rubber all over it, you know, front and back. Drop downs in the quarters still have their original drain holes in them. Uh, there's no indication that they've ever been replaced. All the pinch wells are evident on both of them, left and right. Uh, gas tank. Uh, I can't tell if it's stainless or just a replacement tank. I'm sure it's not the original. The, uh, the tank looks too good to be an original tank. The subframes on the back going toward the rear of the car are the same as they were in the front. Just as clean and fresh and nice as you'd ever hope to find. Um, that's our undercarriage of our 63 Max Wedge car. And um, again, no leaks at this point. That doesn't mean a year from now you won't find a drop of oil on the floor. Um, <clears throat> correct style exhaust system. Correct. 426 max wedge engine from what we can tell from the casting number and the appointments on top of it. We're going to do a little research on this guy because uh, we were assuming it was a tribute car, but at this point, maybe not. So we're going to do a little Chrysler uh, historical research and see what we can find for you. But phenomenal car. This thing is absolutely one of the nicest cars that we have in the building at this point. It shows a lot of originality both from its panel placement, the undercarriage, uh, just everything on the car and there is not a, a vehicle anywhere that has better paint or fit and fitment than this guy does and it's here at Hangsters in Daytona Beach, Florida. So if you're in the market for a very special Mopar, you're looking at it. Okay, we're in our uh, Max Wedge Convertible 1963. Uh, really special car. Very, very special car. Horn works just like it should. Um, fuel gauge, we've got a little under a half a tank, uh, between a quarter and a half. Jeff gave us a little bit more gas in this one. Temperature gauge is working, it's just starting to come up right now. Speedometer, Jeff will show you when we're out driving it. The, the uh, amp gauge showing a little bit of a charge just the way it should. The clock not working and we don't care. Um, and the radio also doesn't appear to be working. And another one we don't care. We don't do radios and we don't do clocks. Um, tachometer working, just like it should. Sun Super Tac. Um, punch button automatic transmission. Little neat little thing here I'm going to show you. On these punch buttons, what's really neat, what we used to do when you pass somebody, if you're going in drive, it doesn't matter if you're driver or whatever, but uh, when you pass somebody, if you take the reverse button and move it in and out, just don't push it in the whole way, that flashes your backup lights off and on. So when you pass somebody, you can say hello by flashing your backup lights off and on. Um, everything in this car is just as nice and fresh as you'd ever hope to find. Uh, it's a great car. Uh, it, it just, I, I can't, I can't overemphasize how nice this car actually is. Uh, let's see, wipers, wipers are functioning as they should. They even go down and park. The uh, fan for the defrost is not functioning. We've got to figure out why the fan's not working. But other than that, everything is working as it should. Again, temperature coming up. And we're going to go out of park. And we're going to punch this guy into drive and go for a ride. Okay, we're going down the road. Just the car goes tracks just as straight and nice as could possibly be if you aim it right. There it is. Uh, speedometer working as it should. You can see it coming up. I forgot to show you, turn signal right, working, turn signal left, working, again our temperature coming up and uh, about a, I don't know, quarter of the way up uh, where it should be, it's been running now for a while, a great car, really a great car. Nice straight car, look at this, this car goes down the road just as nice as you'd ever hope to have a car drive. Goes down the road nice and straight. Still have a touch of steering wheel. I'm going to have to here though. I'm going around a turn. Okay. I just finished 
up the race last night at Daytona, so. Nice smooth running car. We gotta watch, there's a lot of traffic out today. I'd love to lay into this thing. But uh, a lot of traffic out today. Um, real straight running car. Absolutely no shakes, shimmies, rattles, nothing. Even with a convertible top. The top's up and we have absolutely no rattles or squeaks on it. Nice tight car in every way. Very nice. I, um, I mentioned that I didn't see any cracks in the steering wheel. There is one underneath here. It's a very, very small hairline crack where it just began to shrink a little bit. There's no cracks uh, sideways, but there is one laterally on the underside of the uh, top of the This is a nice car. This is a very nice car. If you're in the market for a fantastic piece of uh, Chrysler engineering, uh, this is available at Hangsters, and um, it, it's just it's just a fantastic car. I can't overemphasize the quality and the fit and finish of this vehicle and the way it drives. Take a look at it. It's 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 really over the top.